Hello dear girls, in this session we'll go through the concluding part of Carl Sagan's brilliant prose piece, the article titled Night Walkers and Mystery Mongers, Sense and Nonsense at the Edge of Science. Here let me just remind you to please refer to this as article in your answer as this is a feature that appeared in a journal. So, this is an example for you on how an article is to be structured properly, how to write an essay, and what kind of language best suits an article. There is a relevance to the title of this article, that is, what is what it actually signifies or means. Carl Sagan explains that towards the end of his article. The key word in the title is edge, which we'll understand during, during this presentation. Stay tuned. Before we move on, I'm sure most of you have this question in your mind. Why should I study this chapter, especially as part of Common Course English? This chapter is different from the literary journeys through musical poems and charming stories that you have been undertaking till now in this A02 paper. So much so that this question is valid. So I'll first give you a few reasons. The first reason being to learn how prose is written, improve written communication, ways with words in prose. One reason that you're for learning Common Course English paper is to improve your communication, especially written communication is focused through a paper like A02. And why I'm mentioning this here is because this particular article is a, an excellent example for how an article is to be written. What kind of a language, as I told you earlier, is to be adopted while attempting an article. So, when you learn this chapter... Please read through the text yourself and see how each paragraph has to be arranged in a meaningful manner so that each para would introduce an important point. What you call, if you look at the structure of a paragraph as such, uh, people, uh, we can divide it into three parts. A topic sentence wherein we would introduce the main points in the paragraph, then a few examples to illustrate that points. We must not generally state points. We must always introduce the points and then prove that with examples. Then a concluding uh, a con one sentence or in one or two sentences, we must also conclude a paragraph before we move on to the next paragraph in an article. And we must also see to it that there is a connection between the final concluding sentence in a paragraph which will lead to the next paragraph. All this you can find in this article. The language how Sagan has um, used, the kind of language Sagan has used in the language and how each paragraph is structured in such a way, which we'll, I'll be illustrating in this session. So that is one thing. You have uh, this is an example on how prose is written. Then next, to understand the relation between literature and life, how literature provides insights into life. So as you all know, since you've completed um, three fourth of the lesson already, you know that this uh, what this chapter deals with. It is uh, this, the, the article writer is talking about science, the relevance of science and how pseudoscience has to be uh, evaded as much as possible. So that is something, uh, but uh, as such, if it is presented, it might not be acceptable to many. 
but through a prose piece in a literary work when it is presented with examples it will be more reachable to people so through literature through a literary text it's not just um, art that is uh, conveyed or propagated but also life lessons so that is why the third aim is of course to promote critical thinking in an interesting way through literature so you have to be think critically uh, after doing a lesson like this before we you make decisions based on concepts that are not proved now that we know the relevance of this chapter let us move on to the points raised by sagan in the last and the most interesting part of the article the last nine paragraphs of this chapter can be summarized into nine points as stated in this slide so this is what i was um, inviting your attention to that is when we write an essay or an article a prose piece in particular how we must see to it that each paragraph has some one at, at one important point that is uh, raised and then how we would with examples prove that point in that paragraph so these are the nine points that are uh, there in the last nine paragraphs and in the coming slides we'll see how each point is explained by sagan so starting with the first point here is what um, sagan states is um, the problem uh, that we are facing today or science the, that that cha the challenge that science is facing today is people's gullibility that is how people are very easily cheated and uh, otherwise many people dislike science not even science they even dislike novelty or something new people dislike even change so that is the first problem or first point that sagan is trying to suggest then moving on to the second point in the sec next paragraph he discusses um, he uh, lets us know how scientific topics have to be made interesting so that is another problem right whenever we hear the term science at least uh, some people um, or maybe mostly non science people people who are not in the field uh, who are not experts in the field usually their first um, reaction is to is that of dislike or they're not at all interested so carl sagan raises this point in the next paragraph that is scientific topics if they have to reach more people if science has to reach more people it has to be made interesting so how that that we'll see later now the next paragraph the third point that he raises is very relevant because uh, this is something that uh, most people are confused about and uh, sagan actually clears that here that is how scientists are also human beings they have they are people with passion and um, in fact quite contrary to our belief sagan tells us that even scientists need to be creative so that is where we have this uh, multidisciplinarity or let's say interdisciplinarity wherein literature comes in our uh, art everything has um, come and they they share uh, some sp a space with science so even scientists if you have to be a good scientist you have to be creative so i have uh, um, to my dear science students i have this one point also to suggest how you have to be more a literary oriented you have to study literature also if you have to be good scientists and which is again um, not told by me but a well known scientist like sagan now this fourth point this many of us have heard that is a characteristic of science what is the reason that science is so acceptable because science is self correcting 
the character of science is self correcting whenever there is a mistake that is pointed out in science if there is proof to establish that it is a mistake science is ready to correct it the next paragraph the fifth point that he raises is about the borderline belief system and this is where the edge i told you in the title the keyword edge comes in edge of science so borderline belief systems the problem with borderline belief system is that it is not subject to experimentation like science they are not ready to prove their beliefs that is their problem now in the next paragraph the sixth point that he raises another important information that he gives us is post judice so if something is to be considered as knowledge it should have a particular characteristic feature which is named as post judice we'll see what it is in the slides then the seventh point that he raises is for truth to come out for truth to reveal two things are essential and they are skeptical observation and discussion truth comes out only through these two means the next point is science is the best antidote for pseudo science antidote means cure if we have to put an end to pseudo science we can do that only by means of accepting science and the last point in the concluding paragraph of this article he very beautifully explains or concludes the with by stating the important virtue of science again why science is important because science is truth and another important feature of this uh, article is as i stated earlier how the points are uh, very clearly stated and how all these nine points are connected to each other as illustrated by the circle so when you look at this the first point uh, where sagan brings in a problem problem with regard to the signs uh, how it is not very um, acceptable to many people so next point is related to that point wherein he suggests solution to make it more acceptable and interesting to people that is the second point now the third point when we look at it we see that um, um, he is again connecting this uh, that is how mostly when we why why do many people dislike science because we think that it is full of theorems uh, theories and uh, concepts hard to understand concepts but uh, through this he relay connects and say scientists are also human beings they are they also need to be creative they also are people with passions they can also go wrong they are not superhumans so he connects that um, you know to make it more science more appealing to people and the fourth point is again for the states why science is important or why science has at least um, science is majority of people accept science uh, because it is open to correction whenever there is a mistake pointed in science it will it is ready to correct it and the next uh, point number 5 is also connected to this because this virtue of science is lacking in borderline belief system which is against any kind of experimentation so the point number 4 leads to point number 5 and then point number 5 leads to the next point that is so what is uh, so the borderline belief system does not have of experimentation so what is if if something has to be considered knowledgeable what is the prerequisite what is essential post judas again we'll see what it is and then so that is a characteristic feature of something that is uh, knowledgeable and then it is again connected to the seventh point uh, that is some um, 
how such um, knowledge you know which is uh, res resulted from uh, skeptical observation that is always questioning and discussion always questioning and involving in interacting with people knowledgeable people uh, if that is not there truth will be hidden so that point is again connected and then from seventh point he moves on to the eighth point so that now the problem is clear to us now we need the solution so pseudoscience uh, hides truth so how do we reveal the truth through the means of science because science uh, so see the last point is again very much connected to the point before that that is uh, the most important feature of science is that it has this virtue of always being true or at least if it is proved to be wrong it is ready to move to the right path so that is very much evident here through this um, circle